Madam President, I'd like to ask uh, that this statement that I'm about to make be placed in a separate part of the record. Without objection. Madam President, last night we had an opportunity. We sat down with the President of the United States for more than an hour. We were discussing with him and with Vice President Harris our nation's need for immigration reform. You were there, Senator Menendez, Senator Lujan, Senator Padilla, along with our colleagues in the House, got to speak to the President in a very informal setting. I want to thank President Biden for taking the time to meet with us. He could have taken the whole day on a victory lap in the Senate after passing the historic infrastructure plan, or at least starting the debate on it two nights ago. But instead, President Biden said, I want to meet with you. He gave us his undivided attention for more than an hour. That's because President Biden understands that we cannot wait any longer to fix America's broken immigration system. It's been 36 years, 36 years since we passed any meaningful immigration bill. We passed it here. It was known at the time as the Simpson-Mazzoli bill. And it was sent to President Ronald Reagan, who signed it. Critics of what was signed call it amnesty. But it, it was a sincere and bipartisan effort to deal with a broken immigration system. We've since learned that the immigration system is broken again in many significant ways. This effort that we're discussing now has been decades in the making. Back when we passed that original immigration reform under President Reagan, our adversary in the world was the Soviet Union. Top Gun was the most popular movie in America. Under the last administration, our broken immigration system absolutely collapsed. Former President Donald Trump's zero tolerance policy at the southern border was not only inhumane, it was ineffective. It made our nation weaker and less safe. The hatred that many people in the Trump administration had for immigrants was palpable. I could go through the list of names, but I don't want to give them any satisfaction to hear their names on the floor of the Senate. But what they think of people who were not born lucky enough to be born in America is just sad, in many ways disgusting. Some of my Republican colleagues have tried to blame President Biden, who's been in office for six months, with the failure of our immigration system. But the reality is Donald Trump was the one who provoked the crisis at our border. Do you remember the speeches when he talked about all the rapists and murderers who are coming in, wanting to live in the United States? Do you remember what he did to our Muslim friends and their families when he cut off immigration from their countries? His administration implemented policies that blocked nearly all claims by asylum seekers. They also prevented members of law enforcement from, from exercising prosecutorial discretion, which made it harder for ICE and DHS to apprehend true criminals. Former President Trump's hate-based policies created a massive bottleneck at our border and a giant backlog of applications that our courts are still working through. President Biden understands that closing our doors to families and children fleeing violence is not only cruel and inhumane, it's not good policy. And it's contrary to the values of this country. The stories are legendary about when the United States closed its borders in World War II under a Democratic president, Franklin Roosevelt, turning away people who were escaping the Nazis in Europe, sending them back to their deaths in the Holocaust. We learned a bitter lesson during that war that that is not what the United States is all about. And we've tried to make it up ever since, trying to lead the world when it came to refugees embraced in America. And those refugees have proven over and over again that they are positive influences on this nation. The Biden administration is bringing order to immigration enforcement, and it'll take some time, but it's on its way. Since President Biden took office, roughly seven in 10 individuals apprehended at our border have been denied entry into the country. Seven out of 10. You wouldn't know that from the speeches given on the other side. Of course, there should be exceptions to the policy, humanitarian exceptions. Our nation has a, a moral obligation 
a moral responsibility to provide refuge to families and unaccompanied children fleeing gang violence, natural disasters, paramilitary violence, and other crises. This is at the heart of our values as a nation. And under President Bush's, Biden's leadership, our nation is no longer tearing babies away from mother's arms. I just read a story in the newspaper yesterday about efforts that are being made in Guatemala and other countries going deep into the forests and jungles to try to find families whose children were taken away from them by the uh, policies of the previous administration. The links we're going to to try to reunite them were totally unnecessary if they had just kept records of the families and children. But they tore these kids away from their mothers and had no plan at all to reunite them. President Biden also recognizes that just fixing the mess of Donald Trump is not enough. We need to provide a path to citizenship for dreamers and others who make our economy better every day and who help over the years for, to add to its growth. The vast majority of Americans agree with this. Democrats, Republicans, and independents. Tens of thousands of dreamers have been saving American lives during this pandemic as nurses and doctors and first responders. Tens of thousands more help the economy grow every day as teachers, engineers, business owners, entrepreneurs, essential workers. They even have volunteered for our military. They respect our country so much, though so many in the Senate do not respect them. These dreamers need to be provided a path to citizenship, as well as the farm workers who are toiling in sweltering heat right now, right now at this moment in this terrible heat that we're, uh, that we're witnessing across the country. They are out in the fields picking the crops that will be on our tables today, tomorrow, and beyond. We had a recent hearing on farm workers in the Senate Judiciary Committee. One of the Republican senators said, here we are talking about mass amnesty, giving these people an automatic path to citizenship. Automatic? Read the bill that passed the House of Representatives. Do you know what it takes to be eligible for citizenship as a farm worker under that bill? 19 years of backbreaking work in the fields. Automatic? 19 years of slaving away at jobs that Americans don't sign up for ever and a possibility at the end of 19 years that they could be citizens. They should be given that chance. Every day these workers head out to the fields and do backbreaking labor, sometimes for 14 hours straight, just to put food on our tables. Giving these people a chance to become citizens is the right thing to do. It'll help our economy. The reforms in our immigration system could add $150 billion to spending power in our economy every year, and over the next 10 years boost our nation's GDP by $1.5 trillion. That's enough money to pay off every student loan in America just by doing the right thing for immigrants in our country. Providing these essential workers a path to citizenship puts more money in the pockets of every American. It'll create 400,000 new jobs, increase each American's annual wage by $600. These people, when they are given some clear picture of what their future will be, can plan it, can start making decisions that in the long haul make them better and our nation stronger. That's what it means to bring these immigrants into the sunlight and to give them a chance to be part of America. By nearly every measure, a path to citizenship is an investment in our nation's future. Last night, President Joe Biden agreed. It can't wait any longer. There's going to be a bill soon called Reconciliation. In 2005, Senate Republicans used the budget reconciliation process to dramatically increase the number of green cards available to immigrants. During the Trump administration, Republicans used the budget reconciliation process to enact a $1.9 trillion tax cut for wealthy donors and corporate fat cats. And they tried to use it to repeal the Affordable Care Act. So there's ample precedent for passing important legislation through budget reconciliation. I've tried for many years to pass a citizenship program through regular order. Senate Republicans have obstructed bipartisan immigration reform time and again filibustering the DREAM Act five times. In 20 years, I brought the DREAM Act to the floor five times and been stopped by the filibuster. They repeatedly blocked bipartisan comprehensive immigration reform, passing the Gang of Eight bill, but never returning to it. This year, I'm convinced, bipartisan 
immigration negotiations are not going to lead us to where we need to be. Republicans made unreasonable demands in that process to limit the path to citizenship to a number that was dreamed up by President Trump as fair, 650,000. Sounds like a lot. 780,000 have already signed up for DACA. And that was after they had closed new entries who are eligible under the law, under DACA, to make application. 650 was a, an effort that showed no real interest in solving the problem. That approach would exclude dreamers who have been blocked from the program for years by President Trump. Republicans also wanted to attach partisan provisions to block innocent asylum seekers and to cut legal family immigration. For all these reasons, I believe the only viable option at this time for passing a path to citizenship is through reconciliation. The overwhelming majority of Americans support this pathway, many of whom have risked their lives to save Americans during the pandemic. This is a critical component of our economic recovery and rebuilding our communities. It cannot wait any longer. Madam President, I yield the floor, suggest the absence of quorum. Clerk will call the roll. Ms. Baldwin.